It's a great joy to welcome you again to Kanguka. My name is Chris Nikumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Tuesday and I want to talk to people who are going through difficult situation and who are losing faith. If your faith has been shaken by your current situation and you feel like quitting, I want to encourage you. Don't quit. Don't lose faith. There is no other place you can find life aside from Jesus. Life is in Jesus. Earthly life is meaningless if you don't have Jesus. Let me tell you that if you are a believer, you shouldn't let your hardship change the way you view God. Don't start blaming God. Don't complain. Remember that as a believer, you already have something that's much more important than anything you may be lacking. Life is in Jesus. He gives you life. He is more important than anything. If you have Jesus, you have everything. You have eternal life. When Jesus was still in this world, he performed miracles and he multiplied bread and fish. He fed big crowds, 5,000 or 10,000 people. Many people kept following him just because they wanted to be fed. So one day, he stopped feeding them and he taught them that unless they eat flesh and drink his blood, they have no life in them. You can read about this in John chapter 6. From that moment, many people stopped following him. Once they left, Jesus turned to his 12 disciples and he asked them if they also want to go away. But Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter knew that life is in Jesus. So I want to encourage every believer who's going through hard times. Don't turn away from Jesus. I want you to stay strong in Jesus because only him can rescue you. The challenges that you face are very small when you consider the power of God. God allowed you to go through those problems but he will rescue you. You need to set your eyes on God and not on your problems. If you're losing faith, I want to share some Bible verses with you. Please read them but don't just read them silently. Read them out loud and make a declaration. Please go to the last three verses of Romans chapter 8. Verse 37 says in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I taught on this verse when we were studying the book of Romans. I told you why we are more than conquerors. Jesus has already won the victory and we are victorious because we are in Jesus. We are walking in the victory that Jesus has already won. I love the next verses very much. Verse 38 to 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't let anything separate you from Jesus. Remain in him. Don't speak negative words. Don't complain. Cling to Jesus. He will always be beneficial to you. Some of you who are listening know what it feels like to go through so much hardship that you feel abandoned. I have personally gone through some difficult times even though I had faith in Jesus. I reached a point where I felt abandoned by everyone. My clothes were worn out. I was sleeping on the floor. My shoes had been big holes in them, but I refused to turn back on Jesus. I decided to remain in Jesus in spite of my problems. Why? Because in Him I found eternal life. Nothing compares to Him. Money doesn't compare to Him. Jesus is life. So I urge you to put your eyes on Jesus regardless of your sickness or your medical reports or your struggling marriage or the bad behavior of your children. Set your eyes on Him because He has won the victory and we are more than conquerors through him. He will give you victory in all the challenges that you are facing. Things may look bad today, but let me tell you that your situation will change if you remain in Jesus. Many people are stuck in their problems because they complain. If you complain, you can't make any progress. Even if you make a little progress, you quickly fall back. You can't get far when you keep complaining. When you complain, you open 
opening a door to Satan to come in your life. I will say it again. When you complain, you're empowering Satan in your life. You need to declare the verses I share with you in Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Speak those verses out loud. Let Satan hear that nothing will separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Once you understand this, you need to stop saying negative words. You need to change your attitude and soon you will see the mighty hand of I am over your life. Now in the teaching portion of the broadcast and we're going to continue the teaching on faith mixed with pride which means faith that lacks humility. I told you that there are requirements that need to be met before God can fulfill any prophecy. You need to walk in righteousness, you need to walk in obedience and most of all you need to pray. There are many promises, many prophecies that aren't accomplished because the people of God don't pray. They just wait for the fulfillment of God's promises without doing anything. Thing. They keep reading them and they wait for them, but they don't do anything in the meantime. We should always pray for the accomplishment of God's promises over our lives or our countries. I told you about Daniel and how he understood that the time had come for the fulfillment of God's prophecy about the return of the captives to the land of Israel. He did something about it. He fasted and prayed for the accomplishment of God's prophecy. He takes prayer in order to see the fulfillment of some promises from God. If you don't pray, it means that you either filled with pride or you lack understanding. Some people don't pray because they lack understanding, but there are other people who don't pray because their faith is mixed with pride. They say that they don't need to pray or fast because God has already spoken and he must do what he promised, otherwise he would be a liar. But let me tell you that God has established prayer as one of the things that trigger the accomplishment of his promises. You can't live a sinful life doing whatever you want and not praying and not caring about God's ways and still claim that you have a promise from God that must happen. You need to separate yourself from sin. You need to walk in righteousness. You need to believe. And most of all, you need to pray for the fulfillment of God's promise. In, Le in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 24, we see the promise that God made to the children of Israel. He told them that they shall inherit the land of Canaan. He said, I will give it to you to possess a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has separated you from the peoples. God made that promise to the children of Israel. But let's go to Numbers chapter 14 verse 8. This is after Joshua and Caleb and the other ten spies had returned from spying on the promised land. The other spies gave a bad report and the people were discouraged. They said that they can't enter into the promised land because there are giants who live in that land and they are stronger than the children of Israel. But Joshua spoke powerful words in verse 8. He said, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Joshua said that they needed God's favor in order to take possession of the land. But this is the same land that God had promised them in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 24. Joshua was there when God made that promise. He knew about it and he believed in it. But even though he knew that God had made a promise, he knew that they still need God's favor. That's why he said that if the Lord is pleased with them, he will bring them into the promised land. Joshua and Caleb never said, we must enter the land because God promised it and he can't lie. We must enter the land no matter what. That will be pride. Instead of saying that, Joshua and Caleb humbled themselves and they said, if the Lord delights in us, 
Then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. They showed humility because they knew that even though God had made a promise, he always has the last word. Last week, we saw that God can cancel a promise if he wants. And no one has the right to argue with him because God is sovereign and he does whatever he wants to do. That's why we need to humble ourselves before him and let him fulfill his promise the way he wants to do it. Some people don't like hearing about this, but I have to tell you about it. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb knew very well the promise that God made, but they humbled themselves and said, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us to the promised land. They already knew God's promise, but that didn't stop them from showing humility. They have faith mixed with humility. God willing, tomorrow we continue to learn from the lives of Joshua and Caleb. May I am bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.